Hello everyone, this is Michelle Crummel and I'm going to be showing you how you can use Zoom with your students to teach remotely. Now I already have the Zoom app downloaded onto my computer, so I am going to open it from my computer, but you can also just type zoom.us in a web browser and start things up there. So I have already created some Zoom meeting rooms in my account. The recurring ones you see at the bottom, these are meetings that are going to happen over and over again with my different classes. And so I made them recurring so that it's always the same meeting ID number and it's the same password each time so they don't have to um, find new links if they have the old one stored somewhere. And I don't have to generate new links every time I want to have a meeting. This one is not recurring. This is a tutoring session that I set up for tomorrow to occur between four and five. For the purposes of uh, this tutorial, I could just use my personal meeting ID. So your personal meeting ID is available to you whenever you want to use it. If you just want um, to chat with friends or, uh, you know, have a quick meeting with a colleague, there's really no need to, to create a whole new meeting space for that. If you want to just use your personal meeting room, you can do that. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can schedule a new meeting. So our meeting, uh, we're going to call it Mr. Barkley's meeting. And Barkley is my dog. He is named after Reginald Barkley from Star Trek fame. And we can set our meeting to start at a specific day and time, or we can let it be recurring. I'm going to let it be recurring just so that I don't have to fiddle with getting the time to start right now. Let's see what other settings we have here. You can require a meeting password if you like. If you don't want a password, you can turn it off. You can change the password to something that is easy to remember. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to turn it off so that it's easy for Barkley to log in. Video host, I want to have video enabled for myself and for my participants. Audio, I want to make sure that I give people the option to hear audio through their computer or through a telephone. So if anyone is having audio issues on their device, they can phone in and still hear the audio. So I do recommend using that setting. The calendar setting, if I keep Google Calendar checked, then this meeting is automatically going to be put on my calendar for me. Advanced options. Um, I do generally use mute participants on entry. You can decide if you want to allow people to join before the host. I generally do allow that, but I can see where maybe you wouldn't want that. Uh, my reasoning there is just that if students, you know, are try trying to make sure everything is working properly and they want to just make sure that they can get logged in and everything seems to be working a few minutes before class is scheduled to start, I want them to have the opportunity to do that. So my uh, Google Calendar is popping up here and I can just hit save and that's going to save that to my calendar. My new meeting is under the recurring meetings list and I'm just going to click here on Mr. Barkley's meeting and we can show the meeting invitation. We can copy that invitation so that we can then send it out in an email. Really all we need is the URL for people to join. So I'm just gonna copy this part of the invitation and then I am going to email that link to Mr. Barkley so he can log into this meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and start the meeting. And here I am in the meeting. I'm going to open Manage Participants so I can see who else is here. I will open up the chat window and I'll be able to see chat if people start typing. And let's go ahead and see if we can get Barkley logged in. And there he is. Mr. Barkley had a little trouble downloading Zoom on his work laptop, but he was able to click the little link that says join in browser, type in his name, and then he popped up right away. Now his camera, video camera is on. He can turn that off if he wants to turn that off. He just has to click on this little icon down here to stop his video. He can also unmute himself. Right now he's muted and I can see that he is muted because of this little uh, microphone symbol with the slash on it right here. I can unmute him. He can also unmute himself. If he wants to unmute himself and talk, he may. He can also press the space bar to temporarily unmute himself. 
Now, if at any point I want to change who is in my big window here, I can just double click on somebody and it's going to bring that video feed down to the forefront. I think by default, at least this is the way that it has worked so far, and I've been in a room with up to 30 people, is that whoever is currently speaking, their video feed is going to be put up front and center. And then when someone else starts speaking, it's going to put them in the front. So it is nice to be able to see the, the face of the person who is speaking at the time. But again, you can always just double click on someone's little webcam thumbnail up here and then it'll put that video feed front and center. Now, of course, he can turn his camera off. And if he turns his camera off, let me show you what you're going to see instead of his video. We're just right over here, by the way. So he is turning off his webcam. And now we're just going to see his name instead while he is talking. Okay, so you can decide and your students can decide if they're comfortable sharing their webcams or not. I think it is nice to have a face to talk to rather than, you know, just talking to a name on the screen, but it works both ways. And I'm not planning to record my live sessions. The main bulk of, of the instruction that I'm putting out for my students is asynchronous and they're watching videos on their own. And the live session is really a time where we're just coming together and doing some, some live Q and A. Uh, maybe I'm doing some quick uh, formative assessment to see how well students are understanding the material they worked on between now and the last time that we met. Uh, and also just like not having the pressure of, of knowing that you're being recorded when your webcam is being shared. Some people aren't, aren't very comfortable with that. But again, that's your decision. You can decide if you want to record your sessions and then have them available for students to, to play back later. Keep in mind though, that if your students are minors, we do want to protect their privacy. So let's turn Berkeley's uh, camera back on and see some of the, the tools that we can use here to actually uh, do some instructing. He really does not like the camera. He doesn't like getting his picture taken either. <laughs> okay, so when I am actually trying to teach something, uh, a really great tool would be to do a screen share. And you have lots of options when you're trying to share your screen. So I'm just click on share screen and I can go to a whiteboard. If I want to use a whiteboard, we'll try that out. And you can write on the whiteboard with a mouse. It is difficult to write math when you are using a mouse. So I do um, luckily have a digital pen that I can use here at home with my computer. And it makes it much easier to write out math problems. So maybe we're going to solve a quadratic equation. Now you can see even with my digital pen, uh, my handwriting isn't that great. but it's certainly good enough to communicate what I'm trying to communicate. So I'm going to stop the share and let's see what else may, what we, we might try doing. iPhone or iPad. Let's try that. Okay, I do have both an iPhone and an iPad. Let's try the iPhone first. And I'm just following the instructions here. That is my home Wi-Fi network that's showing there. It's asking me to tap the screen mirroring. So I'm going to open up that control center screen mirroring. And yes, I do see, um, I don't know if you can see that, but I do see the option to, to select zoom under that screen mirroring. So I'm going to choose zoom and you can see my iPad. Nope. My iPhone. Yes. iPhone. All right. And there's my home screen. So if you have, um, a whiteboard app on your iPhone, you can open that up. I believe I do have a whiteboard app in here whiteboard right there. And I can just use my finger to write on my phone. So uh, this, my phone's screen is rather small, so I'm still not probably, and my finger is big in comparison. So um, still going to be somewhat difficult, uh, but doable. Again, if you have just a, a stylus that you can write with, that might be a better way to write.
it does seem a little bit better but again my phone screen is so small uh, it's still a little bit difficult now it looks like i can zoom in and then maybe write oops undo zoom out that would give me a little more real estate on my screen here my going to be constantly zooming in and out but again it's an option you know to be able to use your iphone if you have one i don't have an android phone so i haven't tested this with an android phone to see if it would work that way uh, as well and, you, and any other apps that you have on your phone are going to work here too you're literally sharing what you see on your iphone with all of your participants interesting though i just turned off my phone and it's still sharing that screen so be aware of that okay let's try screen sharing again but this time i'm going to screen share with my ipad and uh, again i'm just Here's my iPad. I'm swiping from this upper corner like so to bring up that control panel and choosing screen mirroring and then zoom pops up right in that list. So I'm going to click on zoom and now you guys can see my screen. So I'm just going to interact with my iPad here, but everything I'm doing on my screen, you should be able to see. I'm going to go into my GoodNotes app and uh, so you're seeing a document that is not actually what I'm seeing on my screen because you're not seeing my menus. But this is the document that I had planned to open up on my iPad. So this is a PDF. It is open now um, on my iPad, just in the GoodNotes app. And I can write on my PDF. I can just swipe and advance through to the um, subsequent pages. Let me go back to number one and we could you know work on this example I can be talking about it and writing at the same time so here we're looking at a slope field and we are asked to uh, to well not really graph the solution but we certainly could uh, we know that our solution curve passes through the point negative five comma one so I can find the point negative five comma one in that slope field and I'm drawing right on my screen here and we can sketch our solution. We just, oops. We can sketch our solution, which is going to look something like that. And then following um, my way down through the slope field, it's going to continue on to look approximately like so. And then we are asked, what is the limit of that function f of x as x approaches infinity? So x is approaching in, as x is approaching infinity, I can see that the graph is going to continue to get closer to this horizontal asymptote. And this horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 3. So the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is negative 3. So I'm able to write very comfortably um, with my pencil. This is an Apple Pencil. If you do have an iPad, you don't have to have an Apple Pencil. You can write on the screen with your finger. You can use a stylus. But the iPad is a great way to write math. And again, then I can just swipe to the right and advance to the next slide in my presentation and continue talking. Now, I can be recording this. I said earlier that I, I'm not um, recording my live session. But in, when I did make my last couple of videos, I did record them in Zoom. I did a screen share with my iPad, and I talked through the lesson. I was writing on my screen as I went, explaining things, and that whole time Zoom was recording that screen for me. And when I was finished, I'd saved that recording, and then I uploaded it to YouTube. So it was a pretty simple process. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. And it looks like we lost uh, Mr. Barkley. And again, if we do, if he turns off his uh, webcam, we're just going to see his name appear at the top. So when you have multiple students in a session with you, you'll, you'll just see all of their thumbnails across the top here. Whatever doesn't fit at the top, you'll get a little arrow so that you can just keep scrolling to the right and see all of the names up there. So far, Zoom has been a really easy tool to use with my students. It's an easy way to deliver the instruction that I need to deliver. 
and it's a great way to get interaction and face to you know we're not physically face to face but if we're sharing the webcams then we're kind of virtually face to face and we still have that human connection it is it's it's a nice way to meet with students remotely when you want to end your meeting there's a an option down here that says end meeting and then when I click that it's going to ask me if I just want to leave or if I want to end the meeting for everybody. So if students want to hang back for a few minutes, uh, if, if they're doing something in groups maybe and they want to make a plan, they can do that. Uh, there's usually probably no reason for that to happen if you've said your goodbyes and you want to, you know, everyone to leave at once so uh, that they're not left in the room unmonitored, then you can end the meeting for everybody. I hope that was helpful. If there's anything that I forgot to show or talk about, or, or if you have questions about Zoom, uh, I'm not an expert, but I've been using it for a little while and it seems pretty easy. The students have found it to be pretty easy as well. Uh, just let me know in the comments if there's something else you want me to make a video about. Thank you.